Did you know that you could heat emboss on vellum to create beautiful backgrounds for your cards? Let me show you how to do it. Let's get crafting. My goal today is to create a wintry white card with silver accents. To achieve that, I'm going to be using matte metallic cardstock, some vellum, of course, Hero Arts embossing powder in white satin pearl, and paper glitz in sparkle. Now I'm going to start with my base, and it is already cut out to eight and a half by five and a half, and I'm going to score that at four and a quarter. I'm going to go ahead and fold my cardstock in half and burnish the edges with a bone folder. Using my Fiskars paper trimmer, I'm going to cut off most of the front part of my card. So I've opened it up and I'm going to measure out one inch from the scored edge. And I'm going to just leave that one inch there because that's where we're going to attach the vellum to. The remainder piece will be cut into one inch strips. You'll have a little bit left over, but for the most part, you have no waste here. I'm also going to go ahead and cut out my piece of vellum and that's going to be the same size as my card front, so five and a half by four and a quarter. Make sure that you save your extra pieces of vellum. Um, I pretty much keep all my scraps and utilize them often. I'm going to be using my Hero Arts Bold Prints Cling Stamp. This one's called Hand Drawn Snowflakes and it is stunning. I actually got this as part of a card kit um, at Joann's last year after Christmas. Um, I paid $12 for the whole card kit, so I'm really into being thrifty. But if you have another snowflake background, by all means use it. Um, I'm inking this up really well with some Versamark, and I'm gonna just gently lay my vellum on top of it, and then place a piece of scrap copy paper on top of that, and give it a good firm rub. I want to transfer the Versamark onto the vellum. But you're going to notice a little problem here. And I left this in because I want you to see how I fixed it. The bottom right, I didn't ink up very well. I'm going to try again, but you'll see that it really just, I must not have had any Versamark there. So I'm just very carefully going to lift up my edge without moving my vellum. Give that some more ink and then lay it down, giving it pressure and you'll see that that does the trick. And I'm trying for the other top part too, but it all comes up and it does turn out beautiful. But as long as you don't move your cardstock or your vellum, you'll be able to go ahead and transfer that ink without a problem. I am using some tweezers here to go ahead and pry that off because I don't want my little mitts on it. Because if you know me, you know, what did I forget to do? I forgot to use the anti-static powder bag, but that's okay. It comes out just fine. Now, I lay down a piece of I keep everything, y'all. Just a piece of scrap paper, and I'm using this Hero Arts White Satin Pearl. This is beautiful, and I've been wanting this for a long time, and Joann's just did their reset, and this was in it, so I had to take some home, and it was on sale. Win-win. So I'm going to give this a really generous coating of the White Satin Pearl, and then I'm going to knock it off and make sure it is all covered, and it is. Ugh. It's beautiful. Now, the beauty of this particular heat embossing powder is you can use it on any color cardstock and it takes on the color but leaves a pearlescent finish. So this is going to leave a very subtle pearl white background. Wait till you see it. Now, apparently all vellum is not created equal and you can't necessarily heat emboss on most vellum. This works out just fine. This is from Michael's Recollection brand, and I've never had a problem with heat embossing on it for anything. So I recommend it, and it's very economical. I did make sure that my embossing tool was fully heated up for a good 30 seconds before I went ahead and melted that embossing powder. The other key here is to make sure that you keep your heat gun moving. You don't want to scorch your cardstock. You've already put some... Uh, 
work into it. So just keep it moving and it's, oh, look at it. It's so pretty. I don't know if you, yes, there you go. That little subtle shine. It's beautiful. Hey y'all, I'm Wendy from Village Card and Craft and I want to thank you so much for choosing to spend your time with me today. If you are finding value or enjoyment from my video, please consider giving me a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button. We'd love to have you be a part of the Village Card and Craft community. Hey, it's time to adhere our vellum to our card base. I do use my very favorite Barely Arts Precision Craft Glue here. You could use a double-sided adhesive if you're more comfortable with that, but I like the fact that I get a little bit of wiggle room with liquid glue, and I find that I get much more value. So you're going to find that the vellum is going to line up precisely with your card front because we cut it four and a quarter by five and a half. I do open my card base. I find that it's a little easier for me to adhere this panel onto it. And then I'm just going to hold it down to give it a little bit of pressure. Double check my fold. Everything looks beautiful. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, attach one of those one inch strips that we cut and I'm just going to put glue over the top. We really want to reinforce this card because the vellum is much thinner than the opaque uh, cardstock is. So by utilizing that extra strip, we're providing some stability and support to the card. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the base of this card. That way, oops, <laughs> that way I can um, stand it up. So you'll notice that I struggled a little bit there and that's because I put glue on the wrong side of the cut piece of cardstock and it ultimately needed to be on the underside. So no big deal, I just flipped it over and here I'm gonna go ahead and add glue to the front of my card and adhere the other strip making sure that the cut edges are where they need to be. I find that I use my acrylic blocks more to hold down or weight down cardstock when I'm applying glue, but I got these at scrapbook.com and they are excellent. The last thing I'm going to do to my card front before I work on my embellishment is to add a bead of glue right at the base of the white strip but above the vellum. I want to kind of cover up that edge and the metallic silver cardstock really just gives it um, a little bit of elegance. Just a quick note, if you love paper crafting and you are into card making, please consider joining us over on Facebook at Village Card and Craft. We would love to have you share your own projects as well as if you make some of mine. So we have a great little group over there. Can't wait to see you. Okay, I'm going to be switching gears here to work on the embellishment. I'm going to be using Picket Fence Studios Paper Glitz. This color is Sparkle. I adore this stuff. And if you want to see another project that I use this with, I will link it above and it made beautiful flowers. So I'm going to spread this out on a piece of regular white cardstock. I want to create my own sparkly cardstock. So you can do a couple of things here. Um, I'm going to easily spread this out. This is actually a cake decorator spatula thingy, but you can get uh, similar items through scrapbook.com and I'm also using my little palette knife and kind of spreading it out. You want it to be fairly thin um, because you want it to dry quickly but you also want to make sure you have decent coverage. For any type of mixed media, texture, paste, what have you, I highly recommend using Press and Seal. Now, it is my understanding that you can't get it very readily in Europe, but I will find a source for it and link it. It is wonderful. It's far superior to cling wrap 
because cling wrap really doesn't cling, let's face it. This stuff seals it. I've used the same piece for quite some time on the top of this particular bottle. I also use it to cover up uh, any of my Tim Holtz texture paste and um, I, I pretty much use it for everything. So I actually have a roll of it that's extra. I get it when it's buy one get one free at our local supermarket and uh, I use one for the kitchen and one for the craft room. Okay, with my paper glitzed cardstock dry, I am using Sizzix Thinlets. This one is from last year. It is called um, Layered Christmas Tree. And I have opted to do the base layer and the top layer with the paper glitz. Now, on the card that I show you at the end, I did all three layers with the paper glitz cardstock. But this go around, I had to redo it because I kind of lost the footage and I wanted you to see this. So I am going to speed this up, but you'll see that I leave the cutouts on my magic mat and they are actually placed exactly how they're going to go on the tree. If you haven't used any of the Sizzix um, thinlets, they're very easy to put together because they kind of have an impression where you're going to put the next layer. So I just left them all in the same position and then I'm just going to pick them up with tweezers, add my liquid glue and away we go. So I'm going to speed this up way fast so you can see how I do this. Now on the finished card project, I do go ahead and die cut out um, the ornaments, but I do everything in silver as well as the presents to give the front of the card some balance. But while I was recreating this Christmas tree, I thought, what about adding some dimension to the tree over and above the layers? So I actually used uh, Tim Holtz grit paste in Snowfall. And I created little snow drifts on the cardstock and it is beautiful. So that could be another way. I literally dragged everything that I had that was white, be it cloud whip or, um, oh, what is this stuff? Uh, foil flakes and silver, whatever I had in those colors, I went ahead and dragged out and then decided how I want to put the card together. I really wanted to give this card some elegance and beauty and use some products that I don't necessarily use all the time. Well, I highly encourage you to check out what you've got in your stash. Could be pops of color, could be stickles, liquid pearls, other types of texture paste. The sky is really the limit here. Gather it all up. Even glitter and glue would work. Anything to give this some elevation into the beautiful card that it becomes. Okay, we're going to add some balance to the tree now and I have just die cut out the little ornaments. I die cut them out in silver twice because one die carries I think nine different little ornaments and I'm going to go ahead and zippity do through this to get those ornaments placed on the tree. Now I originally wanted to do a landscape card, but the tree was too tall. So I am doing a portrait shaped card and I'm adding my liquid glue all over the back of my Christmas tree. And I'm gonna go adhere that to the front of the card. I'm gonna go ahead and use my handy dandy acrylic blocks while I go ahead and add some glue to the two little presents. Now, once again, to add balance, I cut the presents out in silver metallic cardstock and the bows out in the white cardstock. And I'm gonna kind of use them as almost a tree trunk by placing them towards the center of the base of the tree. That way it kind of grounds that tree at the same time. With the exterior of the card nearly complete, I just need to add a sentiment. I focus now on the inside, but 
but you might be asking yourself, mm, how is that going to work? If I stamp something underneath the vellum, you're going to see it on the outside of the card. So what I did was a card inside of a card. So I did make another card with lighter weight cardstock. This is the Recollections cardstock. It's 65 pounds because I didn't want to add too much bulk to the card. And I didn't make it the standard five and a half by four and a quarter. I cut it down about a quarter of an inch on all sides. That way it slips inside. And kind of disguises the fact that there's a sentiment inside. So I am using Honey Bee's Buzzwords. This is Christmas Buzzwords. This was a small stamp set that I got from scrapbook.com last year. I did not find the exact same stamp set, but one that is in the same font with very similar um, stamps available. So I will link that in the bottom. And as you can see, I did have some residual black ink. That's not really gonna matter here, because I'm going to use silver embossing powder. Once again, I'm kind of keeping to the white and silver theme throughout the card, including the sentiment. So I am quickly heat embossing this, and then it'll be ready for my card. Now I am going to line up the fold in both cards. That way it lays flat when the card is closed. Don't forget, you can certainly customize the inside of your card to your own specifications by making that tag smaller or the little note card. But it does lend itself to the opacity of the vellum and allows you to really see the heat embossing. You also have the other choice of not heat embossing. You could do dry embossing and create a 3D effect with your vellum as well. So let me know if you like the card. Are you going to try it? And uh, come share it with us on Facebook. We'll see you real soon.